the garden is the green space within the architectural buildings which surround it. And in London, in the 18th century, a number of the squares were actually laid out and planted before any of the houses were built. Mm. Thomas Fairchild wanted to beauty, beautify the city. Crowded spaces in cities up until in the medieval times led to pestilence and disease. Opening spaces for the public meant that there was fresh air. So things haven't changed. We still need these green lungs. It's one of the, the issues that's uh, kind of raising its head in recent times is how, to some degree, overgrown and how dense Marion Square has become. It's very different to the original layout in the mid-18th century where you could see from terrace to terrace. You? So you could literally see the four sides of the square. Wow. And the planting was deliberately um, planted in a way that you'd have that transparency. So there was a, a great sense when you're standing in the middle of the square of this great architectural ensemble of these kind of cliff faces of, of houses surrounding you. But it's much more of a... Of a, of, a, of a forest of trees, mainly as a result of Victorian planting and early 20th century interventions. Was that an architectural plan just to kind of obscure the sides or, or was, it, was it just to let go a bit? To some degree it really was let go. And I suppose in the 19th century there was a fashion for to have this kind of parkland type of setting which really came out of kind of romantic ideas where you have very dense planting. So, and to some degree in Dublin, Dublin lost, even in the 19th century, even 50, 100 years after the Georgian period, really lost that whole urban sense and the architectural sense of strong streetscape and uh, urban set pieces. So even 50, 100 years after the Georgian period, that kind of culture in Dublin vanished. Is it the classic example? of uh, an urban square? Not at all. and It's the most interesting square, I suppose, in terms of the makeup of the, of the buildings. But to the purest, really, Mountjoy Square and Fitzwilliam Square, but I think particularly Mountjoy Square is very underrated because it's a perfect set piece. Each side is exactly the same width. They all have standard parapet heights and all the windows are very uniform. But Marion Square, it took about 40, 50 years to build this square. So the north side of the square, which is the Hollow Street side, is kind of very old-fashioned houses. There are, there's a jumble of architectural styles. But as you move around then to the, to the south side of the square they're very uniform they're very modern and finally they've got their act together and the parapet heights are much more uniform it's a kind of a marching cliff face of houses so it's the square that's most interesting in showing the evolution of architecture in Dublin. Joe I alluded to you earlier on you're the uh, arboriculturalist amongst uh, us here what is the tree uh, kind of quality here? The, the original park would have been laid out 250 years ago so there's probably very little of the original trees left um, that would have been planted at that time. So now you've got a, a wide mix of, of garden trees, um, small stature trees, cherries, that type of thing. Um, and there are still a few of the majestic limes, like the one we're standing under. Um, classical city trees, like the London Plain. And originally, it would have been a double line of trees, sort of that you'd see through it. And the, the, the park would have been laid out in a very deliberate way, often called um, Jardin Anglaise. Because English the garden yeah, style, yeah English garden style because the English garden romantic movement was to take, you know growing a pace where the gardens were all natural whereas and the French were still doing very formal um, like Versailles and I suppose what we forget is 250 years ago when people planted gardens they weren't really thinking about us contrary to what most people think they were thinking about themselves and the trees were planted to a scale of the time. Now, 250 years later, they're huge and you look around and you can't actually see the buildings, you see a few chimney tops. Yeah. But now we have probably a quarter of the park is full of trees and um, an acre of trees will, ta- will, will take in two and a half tonnes of carbon. Wow. So this in itself, I mean, we talk about green lungs, but, but in terms of um, pollution control from the outside traffic, the trees themselves are doing a huge job. Up in Stevens Green in the 17th century, it was a place where the city gallows was, and they had public executions there, which oh apparently gosh. was a, a favourite favourite uh, time for people to come out and, and watch somebody been hanged. And um, people were pilloried there. There were stocks there. There were lotteries. There was even a wooden cage erected in 1709, uh, in which they incarcerated prostitutes. Mm-hmm. so people could pass by and insult them and throw things at them. I'm reminded that a certain financial institution has its uh, headquarters at the moment on uh, St. Stephen's Green, so we might bring back the pillories and throw a couple of rotten veg. 